now for my review of Blade Runner 2049 and the Humanity Bureau. Right. Now, Niels Otterson yesterday he said um, that Blade Runner, or the Blade Runners, basically are government agents in the, in the near future in WO Communism Part 2 by the Jewish Zionist Freemasons. Um, he said that these are agents hunting down runners, hunting down people who don't fit in their NWO or who aren't productive little bloody slaves. And he's right, of course. And the Humanity Bureau, I've watched both of these movies now, and the Humanity Bureau is even more blatantly exactly that. Nicolas Cage is a government agent traveling around. I'm not going to give you any big spoilers or anything, don't worry. He's traveling around and he is sent on missions to basically visit non productive Goyim and have them packed up and sent to, guess what? Eden. Yes, Eden again. But this time, Eden is a basic FEMA camp, actually worse. Right, it's all a big lie as to what it is, but I'm not going to say. Um, but you can get the general idea. He's he's packing them off, right? He, and uh, he makes his run, right? Blade Runner. He makes his run, and he tries to run out of America. A post Seattle false flag America. Yes, that's right. Post Seattle false flag, complete with its trident Polaris missile new hoax and then of course blackout best case on the date 322 march 22nd onwards anyway um blade um is a reference to people who have been under the blade because of course pris is uh transgender as you know daryl hannah is transgender in real life and um, Mackenzie Davis the new Pris which I did a video on yesterday you must watch um, is is of course transgender as well in real life you know Daryl is a man's name Mackenzie is a man's name think about the actor Mackenzie Crook that's a man so Logan's run they do their run and blackout um, as far as the movie is concerned, if I was just to take it as an entertainment uh, movie, Blade Runner 2049, it falls short. It just constantly falls short in all ways. It has one thing going for it, a mystery. But the, at the end, I'm not going to give you any spoilers, but the mystery falls short. The atmosphere falls short. The soundtrack is nowhere near as good as the Vangelis uh, soundtrack of the original the artistry no nah, not as good just everything falling short the actors well they're all apart from like three people in the movie uh, they're all robots replicants so they have to act bland um, so the movie becomes extremely bland um, it's it's long but i haven't got a problem with the movie being long the problem i have with it is that um it just doesn't have what the original had you know if the original was too short um if the original was twice as long then you'd have a movie but no this one just doesn't quite make it in, in every way i mean the one character that could have been good as well is that uh that jewish um bautista um, bodybuilder guy he has presence you know he, he would have been good in the movie but no he's in the movie for, for two minutes maybe less than two minutes out of a two and a half hour movie film what a joke so you know not a good film it's a shame it had potential but no wasted as so many movies are nowadays. I mean, don't remind me of that Star Wars um, Force Awakens film where, where Han Solo gets killed. You know, son-killing father. That, that's some sick Zionist 
divide and conquer of the Goyim. That's nasty. There you go, the Eye of Isis, the Eye of Ra, the Eye of Lucifer, Freemasonry, Jewish Zionist Freemasonry, and a nightmare post-Seattle false flag future. I will stop that one there, and I will go on to do uh, Operation Blackjack part, I think part 92 now. It will be a return to the Milly Molly Mandy code, the Polly code, the Bobby Brown, Millie Bobby Brown code. It's all, you know, pedo Freemasonry. <laughs>